Well, Tessia Yasmin Ladas is a 24-year-old author who's on the line with us here, and we're going to talk about her book, Today Ended an Hour Ago. How are you today? I'm good, thank you for asking. So, what inspired you to write this book, Today Ended an Hour Ago? Well, it initially started after I had a car accident where my head kind of hit the steering wheel. Wow. (laughs) And, um... I, I kind of blacked out for a minute and then when I came back I started noticing that a lot of my memories were kind of going away and I had a lot of journals that I would flip through and a lot of the memories just didn't feel like they were kind of my own mm. and so it created all of these events in my life as like a separate entity and it became a story. <laughs> yeah so is that kind of a permanent thing I mean do you still feel like the memories before the accident aren't yours or has it kind of healed over time? No they've, they've definitely come back uh, I'd say quite drastically like it's a very intense feeling when you'd look at something and you would remember it and it was almost like a click so is the kind of overall story basically your story if you see what i mean (laughs) Uh, i do um yes uh, essentially uh, the majority of the events in the book are are my own the book explores themes of identity trauma and independence so how do those themes resonate with your own personal experiences well a lot of it kind of came from identity and knowing that with how often i was moving around and going from place to place i found especially at such a young age i found i was consistently adapting myself to to my surroundings which i find so much of so many of us do yeah and i realized that it created almost like this this deeper void of not truly knowing what it is you like what it is the things that make you you because you're consistently changing so often and there is so much to gain from that but there is so much that lack of stability takes away from and the protagonist faces a difficult choice between staying and facing social torment and disappearing (laughs) so what's the significance of the choice within the book i think it's it's almost like a representation of choosing between yourself and what is what everybody expects you to do like a lot of people have this expectation in life everything that we're, we're meant to do but it really comes down to just kind of waking up one day and being like this isn't really what i want to do anymore and this isn't the setting that's going to make me the happiest and having your own just ability to say i want something else i need something else basing a book about your own personal experience is it maybe difficult to open up very very (laughs) very much so i um yes a hundred percent i found that with i was always like use the expression i'm an open book because if anybody had asked questions about my life i never really had an issue answering but i found actually like wanting to willingly talk about it and bringing it myself was never really present there because well one it was just unnecessary but it's so important that we express who we are to the people around us because otherwise we end up in things that we don't really gain a whole lot from and build from and so writing a book about a lot of uh, personal things it, it's healing and it's also very eye-opening how much of the book is real and how much stuff did you kind of make up <laughs> well to be honest the only part that i really made up was a bit of my love life the rest, mm. of, the, <laughs> the rest of that was true but um there is a, a really beautiful love scene in it um and i i that didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever maybe hesitant to make stuff up or did you feel it was maybe quite important to make the book a little bit more exciting? To be honest, no, I never really felt obligated to to make it more dramatic than what it was because yeah. I the events that actually happened in itself were very, I always like calling them shining. Like they were moments that you would be able to just pull out of a movie and just kind of look back at it and go, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> were there parts of your life that did happen that you maybe didn't have enough room for in the book or you just didn't include because they were maybe not dramatic enough? Good question. I will say there's probably like little moments that I spoke about broadly, but if I had gone further in depth, might have added an extra error, but I didn't find them necessary towards getting the overall point across. How long did the book actually take you to write? I began writing it about a year and a half ago in, I'd say two years ago, around two years ago. And then it wasn't until I moved back to Spain, which is a prominent location in the book, 
where I was surrounded back by a lot of the people that I love so dearly and had very deep connections with that kind of made me want to look at the world bigger because it was this was actually the first country in my life that I'd ever moved back to mm. whereas everyone was kind of hopping around because you kind of live in a small town there in Spain does that help with writing maybe because it's a more relaxing environment oh absolutely I live in this tiny town called Sitges which is just is un paradiso it's a little paradise yeah it every every town's got its thing but Sitges really is just this place where people and enjoy and drink and laugh and love and communicate yeah absolutely it sounds quite idyllic because certainly in Britain when you go on holiday you always go to Spain so to kind of spend <laughs> your whole life there in a small village is Maybe the perfect life for a lot of people. I, I think so. I definitely think a lot of people can take away from these kinds of lifestyles, which is why I think traveling is so important. And I so hope that the, the younger audiences have a chance to read this book because I really believe that it can help people either push them out of their comfort zone into taking that next step in life or just kind of understanding some things that some women go through, some women of colour go through. Yeah. Everything's that we kind of, not neglect, but we touch on with a little bit more light where it's like, okay, if we take a step back, we do really acknowledge these as issues and ways to move forward. So how has travelling contributed to your own understanding of identity? That it's so expansive. Like the amount of cultures and people and languages that I have seen, there's there's so much similarities, but there's so many di- di- differences. <laughs> It's it's like the same way we have cup in English. You can call it like a vaso in Spanish, but it's still a cup. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing with with culture, like the meaning of family and the way that we view friends and our social interactions and our overall behaviors. And those are so similar. But then you look at the separate part of it, which is the culture and the way that that kind of impacts that. And I am so grateful to have experienced so much culture. Did all that culture that you've soaked up? influenced the writing of Today Ended an Hour Ago. It did. I would definitely say it has a heavy um, American, oh, as I am American, it definitely has a yeah. heavy uh, American side to it because I find America is a very aggressive country. Everything is done very aggressively, whereas like Spain, you have siesta hours <laughs> where you get to take a nap <laughs> in the middle of the day. <laughs> but um, I would say that it is an aggressive book that I hope to be looked at with a lot more sensitivity and tranquility, which I get to take from the European culture side as well as my Caribbean side like there's so much love I have for nature and with my scuba diving and with sharks and that has just been connected and I've taken that from the Caribbean so yes there's been many cultural influences yeah now scuba diving with sharks to a lot of people sounds terrifying (laughs) is it one of these things that is actually maybe quite an adrenaline rush or is it maybe actually quite relaxing for me it was it was definitely relaxing (laughs) yes um, it was it was like being in a rescue center surrounded by a bunch of puppies. Like in Fiji, we had the same sharks that would come around every almost every time, and they all had names, and they all had specific identifying features, and they all had their own personalities. Like we had Grandma who had a really messed up left eye, so she'd get really close to your face so she could see you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was definitely an, an experience I believe everyone even if you're afraid of sharks should just acknowledge so if you ever come across some evil James Bond type villain that threatens to put you in a shark tank you'll actually be quite excited by the prospect will you oh I- Absolutely. I would sit at the bottom of the tank and I would just enjoy it. I would be like, what are you doing? Yes. Maybe name him Fred. Have a nice <laughs> conversation. Well, what do you hope the readers will take away from this book? Today ended an hour ago. That no one event should ever define you. That endurance and perseverance are to be taken at with with a whole heart and with open eyes rather than rather than the weight that we feel everything carries because it is like life life has life is heavy. Yeah. <laughs> but when things happen so consistently back to back it's almost like it's so overwhelming that it no longer feels heavy. You're kind of just going through it. And then when you finally have those moments, when you get to sit with it and look at it, don't look at it as like this, this jury thing, look at it like you're talking to a friend and that you get to have a conversation and learn from it and, and be able to be with it and to be okay with it. Well, are you working on any more books at the moment? Uh, I I am. I am working on a second novel called a hundred hers, which is basically a hundred different identities and a 
100 different stories and therefore it's going to be a very long book. <laughs> it's probably going to be about 100 chapters because I'd like each chapter to be a story from a certain life, like one life as an artist, one life as somebody who lived in a clinic, a clinic, somebody who was in royalty, just so many different identities because there is so many people that we can and have the potential to be. That's such a diverse mix and I suppose even with 100 people, there's still a lot you'd end up missing out because there's so many different personalities that people can have. Oh, a hundred, a hundred percent. I always think about that with movies. It's like I could spend the rest of my life watching a movie back to back to back, and I still will not have watched every movie ever made. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, where can we find this book? Today ended an hour ago. If we want to read it, you can find it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. The ebook is coming out this week on Apple. Um, loads of others if you pretty much just google today ended out an hour ago or if you google tessia yasmin my name uh the book will pop up excellent well many thanks for joining us today it's been great talking to you thank you for having me